What's going on guys? In this video, we are bringing it back to the basics with the Google Finance function. So I'd like to consider myself as the, or at least I believe I've made a name for myself uh, when it comes to making portfolio trackers in Google Sheets. I have tons of videos and a whole bunch of different portfolio trackers, which you can find on my YouTube channel and on my Patreon. But we got to bring it back to the basics sometimes for the newcomers that don't know that you could do stuff like this in Google Finance. So yeah, you could get real crazy with it and create these really cool portfolio trackers. But how are we doing that? It's actually with the equals Google Finance function. So right here, you could see you could input tickers from the stock market and it will pull live data. And when I say live data, you can see there's a little note down here that says quotes are not sourced from all markets. There may be up to a 20 minute delay, which that's fine. It's not like you're going to be using this to actively day trade, but it's good to make portfolio trackers and be able to track your returns or whatever. There's a whole bunch of different use cases for it, but this function is very powerful and it's as simple as you type in equals Google Finance and then how about the SPY? We want to know what the SPY is. We have to put it in quotations and there we go, $405. That's currently what it's trading at on today's date, which is January 29th, 2023. Now, you could get creative with it. You could build upon it. You could do more with it. So you could see that it says ticker, but then we have an attribute. We have a start date, end date, and then interval. So let's hit comma price. Again, that also has to be in quotations. And we could come up with a range. Let's say we want to know what the SPY's price was from how about 1-1-2023 comma 1-1-2023. Uh, one dash, what is it? The 29th. So pretty much the entire month. Let's see what the price was each day. And we close that. And then if we hit, or even before we hit enter, it says interval. So we'll say daily, and then we'll hit enter. And then there we go. We have each day and what the price of the S&P 500 was uh, on the close. Now, maybe we don't want daily. Maybe we want weekly. So we just change daily to weekly. And then there we go. There it is at the close of each week. And what's even cooler is let's get rid of all of this. And you, you could go much further back. I mean, we could do weekly and we could go from 2003 to 2023. And you could see we got this long list of the past 20 years of what the price was. But let's scroll back up. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete all this. And it's not just price. So let's actually you hit on a little. Well, not that we'll go down. We scroll down and then if we hit learn more and then this will pop up, you get better insight of what you could actually do. So we were just looking at the price, but then there's more stuff. We can look at the price open. We can look at the current high, low, what the volume is, the market cap, trade time, data delay, volume average, the price earnings ratio, the earnings per share your 52 week high and low, the change, the beta, change percent. There's a whole bunch of different things you could do. One thing that annoys me is you cannot pull dividend data from stocks or ETFs. You could do it with mutual funds. For some reason, you can't do it with stocks or ETFs. I wish Google would uh, give us that option. You can do that by scraping data from different websites like Finviz. I have a couple of videos like that, but you could try all these different things. So let's X out of that. So instead of price, how about let's look at PE. Hit enter, and that didn't work for uh, the SPY. Let's let's because technically it doesn't have a P. It does, but it doesn't. Let's look at a uh, stock like Apple. So there's Apple's price earnings ratio. It's currently twenty three point eight seven. Or how about its EPS? It's six. Okay. Oh, and then again, we could do the price and then there's the price. But now how are we creating advanced stuff like this? What are we doing here where we're getting all of this data? Or if we jump over to positions, th there's so much you could do with it. So what we're doing is maybe we're writing tickers. So we got our tickers and then we got our price over here. And then say we have, we want to know their earnings per share. And we want to know Apple's, we want to know Microsoft, we want to know uh, JP Morgan and how about Exxon Mobil. So here's four stocks that we all know. If we hit equals Google finance, and then if we just click on the cell and then hit enter, It'll load the price for us. And then what's really cool is we could drag this down 
And then there we go. Now we have the price, but we can go in even a step further. We'll jump back into here. So if you don't put in an attribute, it's just going to default to price, but let's hit an attribute and we're going to hit B3, which has price hit enter should give us the same thing. But now if we jump over to EPS, let's add the money sign for the A4, because we're going to want to keep that the same. And then if we drag this over to EPS, look at that. Now it's taking A4, which is Apple, this, and then it's taking C3, the ticker. We could get rid of the money sign here. And now we could take the money sign onto C3. So then that stays the same. And now we could drag this down. And now we have all of the EPSs for the four stocks. And we could go, and we, we don't have to be just doing stocks. We could do ETF. So there's the SPY and the Qs. So if we drag that down, there we go. We have the price there, EPS. We drag that down. Again, it doesn't have the EPS. I keep forgetting that, but you get the point. You could really expand on this. You could do both stocks and ETF. And then what's also cool is you can make the portfolio trackers or you can do certain like back test. Here's something that I did in a previous video. And I was talking about dollar cost averaging. And if you were to dollar cost average into the S&P 500 for five years, this is every single month for five years, what would your return look like? That could be really annoying going back in time and looking at a chart and trying to figure out what the price was. Instead, this took me maybe two and a half minutes to make. And it was just very simple by jumping over here. Here's our Google finance function, SPY price, and then A3, which is this cell right here. But I had to do something else. I had to add an index to it. So it would just generate the price for me. Because right now, if we were to, I'll go over here. If we were to do equals Google finance, and then we want the SPY and we want to know the price on this day right here we hit enter it's going to create this table so we have the date the close what day it was and then what the price was this is information i don't want i don't want the close i don't want the date and i don't want the uh time stamp because then we can't create a nice easy chart like this to mess with the numbers i just want this cell that says 270 40 cents how do I get that? This is where you can really start to expand. We jump over here and we want to index it. So index, and then what indexing is doing is you're saying, hey, okay, you're going to create a table from what cell do you want within the table? So we want the second row and the second column, which should just produce the number. And then there it is. And then we could do the currency. So we have the dollar sign on it. And great, now we have that. And then I was able to, well, we could just drag this down and the A3 should go down with it. And that's how I was able to get all of these prices, which is this right here. And I was just able to go all the way down, pull all the prices for the dates real quickly. And watch this. I mean, maybe I want more data. Maybe I want 1-3-2000. I want to start from 2000. And then this would be 2-3-2000. And then we could take this and then just drag this all the way down, get all of those monthly dates. So we're not in 2026 yet. So let's go back up to 2023. There we go. And then I could just take this and drag it all the way down and then pull all of those numbers, drag my contribution down that I have here, almost there. And then the last thing is my shares. Bring that all the way down. And you could see it's not a perfect system. So I'm getting an error message here because maybe this was on a Saturday or a Sunday and it's just not pulling the data. So what you have to do is, I don't know if it's going to be a Saturday or Sunday. So I'm just going to change that to nine, six, go jump three days into the future. And then that should correct it. So it's not a perfect system. You're always going to have little errors and bugs, but it's very easy to fix. I'm getting 23 years worth of data and maybe it'll take me two minutes to just correct all of these error messages. So six, jump over here for six, jump over here for six. And honestly, what you can do, you could even expand this further. I could say like, if error, then maybe change the date three days ahead, but we're not going to get too advanced with the code. And there, it took me maybe two minutes to do that. Just fix all of the ones that were having the error message. Now we have 23 years worth of data to see our little back test here, dollar cost averaging. And here are our results. And I mean, this is just, there's no crazy functions here other than this, the current price of the current price of the S&P 500. 
So then I could figure out what our profit or loss is with our value and then um, our profit and loss percentage. But this is just one example of what you could do for the fact that we could pull live stock market data or quote unquote live with a 20 minute delay. And then you could start making advanced portfolio trackers like this, where not only are we pulling all of the positions we may have, if they're long or short, what our cost is, what our value is, what the current price is. And then we could start to chart that and create something like this. So we could see what our profit is right here, what our short balance is, or what our biggest loser and biggest gainer is for the day. There's so much that you can do to expand on it. You could create a million different portfolios. I'm trying to create as many as I can for you guys. So guys, if you're new to this all, I hope you learned something today. If you like the video, make sure to smash that like button. And as always, I will see you in the next one.